see about India, land and people. The speciality of India is that the traces of the different races are found in India. The Dravidians were considered to be the most ancient people of India. But the modern researchers of linguistics and anthropology have proved that even before the Dravidians came and settled in India, six more tribes were also found from different lands. They also contributed to the cultural diversity. These people can be described as Negritoid, that is, Hubsi people. Some historians believe that Negrid or Negro, that is, Hubsi, are the most ancient inhabitants of India. They came from Africa to Baluchistan, via Baluchistan to India. They are black in color having the height of four to five feet and curly hair. Australoid or Nishad people This tribe of people came from Southeast Asia. Their physical characteristics were black in color, with broad head, flat nose, short in height, etc. The Aryans who came later on to India call them Nisha. The origins of the tribes like Kol Munda, Kashi, tribes of Nicobar and Myanmar were found in India. Their contribution in the development of Indian culture and civilization is immense. They made clay utensils, wove cotton cloth and knew many other skills. They had great religious beliefs too. The Dravidians Before the Aryans, the Dravidians used to live in India. The Dravidians were the direct hires of Stone Age civilization and the creator of Mohenjo-daro culture. The Indian culture is greatly indebted to the Dravidians just like the Aryans in many respects. The Dravidians gave the thought of mother as a goddess and father as God. The thought of Parvati and Shiva as mother and father developed. Moreover, the tradition of worshipping nature is the gift of the Dravidians. The tradition of worshipping with Du and Arti are considered to be the gifts of the Dravidians. The Dravidians developed urban civilization by constructing houses with bricks. They had matriarchal system of family. They progressed a lot in different crafts, boat making, weaving, spinning, dyeing, arts, etc. Arrows, Spears and swords, etc., were their weapons. They were well versed in the art of weaving cotton cloth and making tools for agriculture. Due to the dominance of the Aryans in the north of the Vindhyas, the Dravidians shifted to the South India and settled there. As a result, today we can find the people speaking Dravidian family languages like Tamil, Telangu, Kannada and Malayalam etc. in South India. Other Tribes Apart from this Albino, Dinaric and Armenoid tribes are the tribes who migrated from Central Asia. All those three tribes have some similarities. The origins of these tribes are found in a large number in Gujarat, Saurashtra, Maharashtra, Bengal and in Orissa. Mongoloid, that is Kirat, this people possess the physical characteristic 
like yellow complexion, flat face, chubby cheeks, almond-shaped eyes, etc. They came to India from northeast China via Tibet and settled down at North Assam, East Bengal, Sikkim, Bhutan, and they gradually Indianized themselves. The Aryans The Aryans were more developed people than any other contemporary tribes. They loved praying and worshipped the trees, rivers, mountains, the sun, wind and rain. They had created mantras for prayer. In due course of time, some religious ceremonies were originated out of them. The Yagna Gaddi, related to Yagna, observed the influence of the Aryans on Indian culture. The Nordic Aryans were the makers of Aryan culture in India. Accepting the distinguishing element of the different tribes, which came earlier in India, and created a harmonious culture in India with the passage of time. All these tribes who came to India and settled were amalgamated through inter-tribe marriages and thereupon held in merging of all those tribes into one. There were merging of these tribes with their specific style of living different languages and thoughts into one. So right from the beginning, there was a creation of harmonious culture, which gave India a glorious and prosperous heritage. This great heritage of India created attraction amongst the people of the world in such a way that during the ancient period, Many foreigners came down in big number. In the beginning of the second century, a new era began with the advent of the foreigners. This is because of Sikandar's invasion. The Greeks came to India later on. The Shakhas, Kushanas, Pallavas and Hunas etc., came and settled in different parts of India over a long period of time. India became their native land. They all then became Indians. Greek Emperor Minander was recognized as Meland. Thus, the cultured structure of India was strengthened in many ways. This made Indian culture variegated. These tribes migrated in such a way that they lost their individual identity. These foreigner and the Indian tribes were greatly influenced by languages, scriptures, names, religion and beliefs, etc. Religion played a vital role in Indianizing these foreigners. Some of them accepted the Buddhism and some accepted Hindu religion. The Kushan Emperor Kanishka I adopted Buddhism and contributed notably in flourishing Buddhism some pillar inscriptions, coins, cave inscriptions, stone inscriptions etc. witnessed all these. These foreign tribes adopted not only the religion, but they also adopted language, script, social, tradition, etc. They also adopted Indian names and titles. In short, in ancient India, the amalgamation of various cultures enriched Indian culture, making it variegated and prosperous. 